It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Falcon Pixel controllers. Now, I contacted David when I got my V3 and asked if anybody was working on a product video, and if not, I'd like to take a shot. Long story short, Pixel Controller LLC sponsored this video. So if you're running Pixels or you're thinking about running Pixels and you don't have a Falcon controller, check them out at pixelcontroller.com. Now roll the snow! The Falcon F16 V3 Pixel Controller is a popular, fully featured board suitable for both commercial and hobbyist applications. It's got 16 pixel output ports, expandable to 48, supports up to 96 ArtNet universes, and it supports a wide variety of popular pixel protocols. Let's take a closer look. The controller receives E131 ArtNet data on the shielded Ethernet connectors on the upper left side of the controller. Only one connector is used to bring data into the controller. The other connector can be used to pass or daisy chain data out to another controller. The USB port on the board will be used as an audio output connector in future versions of the firmware. The micro SD card slot can be used to update the firmware on the controller. A micro SD card is inserted with notches in the card toward the bottom of the controller. This is a friction slot, so it's not spring loaded. Push the card into the slot to load the card pull on the card to remove it. This slot will also be used as storage for sequence and audio data while the controller is running in standalone mode. That feature will be supported in future versions of the firmware. The four analog connectors allow for the use of current sensors or triggers. They will be supported in future versions of the firmware. The four pin PWM fan connector is powered from the V2 power connector and allows for connecting a fan to the board. Make sure the fan voltage matches the V2 power connector voltage. The fan temperature sensor and set point is set via the web interface. The audio connector will accept an audio board capable of producing high quality stereo audio on an analog 3.5 mm jack. The F16 V3 has four dedicated RS-485 serial circuits that are made available via the three serial output ports. Now these are typically referred to as the DMX output ports. DMX1 jack has all four serial circuits available, DMX2 only has serial 2 data, and DMX3 only has serial 3 data. Each serial circuit can be individually configured to output DMX, Pixelnet, or Renard. The DMX protocol can also be used to drive LOR boards. If you need to use these ports, consult the user manual for configuration and pinout information. Use the external power connector to supply power to the controller if you have 5 volts connected to V2. It's normally powered by V2, but there's less overhead with a 5 volt supply, and it may cause instability with the controller if the supply is under high load. Power connectors V1 and V2 accept up to 10 gauge wire and are rated for a maximum of 32 amps. Power from these connectors is distributed to the pixel output ports. Power for each pixel output port is protected by a 5 amp fuse. Each fuse holder has an associated status LED to the right of each fuse. A green LED indicates the fuse is intact and working. A status LED that's not lit indicates a blown or missing fuse. Fuse status indicators on ports 1 through 8 only illuminate when power is applied to V1. The status indicators on ports 9 through 16 only illuminate when power is applied to V2. The 16 pixel output ports on the controller is where the pixel strings are connected to the controller. All pixel output ports use the same wiring configuration, ground, clock, data, and power. The clock signal is used for timing on pixel strings with four wires. Three wire pixels do not require a clock signal, so no wire would be connected on that port. Also, the controller only supports smart pixels where each node is addressable. Dumb pixel strings where all pixels on the string must be the same color are not supported. In fact, connecting a dumb string to the controller could damage the string or controller. The organic light emitting diode, or OLED, displays controller information and can be used to make some changes to the settings configuration. It shows the controller has booted up, run mode status, and several other useful pieces of information. The function buttons are used in concert with the OLED to walk through the menus. The battery slot underneath the OLED accepts a CR1225 battery and powers an RTC clock chip while the controller is powered off. The battery can be inserted or removed without removing the OLED. 
The clock chip will be used for a standalone mode and will be supported in future versions of the firmware, but there's really no need to install a battery at this time. The Wi-Fi module in the upper left-hand corner of the controller will be supported by future versions of the firmware. F16 V3 expansion boards provide an additional 16 pixel outputs per board. A maximum of two expansion boards can be added for up to 32 additional pixel output ports. The expansion boards are connected to the F16 V3 via a short 8-inch 40-pin ribbon cable included with the expansion board. The ribbon cable will power the expansion boards themselves, but a separate power supply is needed to power the pixels connected to the expansion boards. Only use the new white expansion boards with the F16 V3. If you use the older red or blue boards, you might damage the controller. There are three LED status indicators just to the right of the 40-pin expansion connector. The left LED is the power status indicator and will be green when power is applied to the controller. The center LED is LED 1 and will be solid green when the controller is in run mode. The right LED is LED 2 and will be solid green when the controller is in test mode. LED 1 and LED 2 will flash green when resetting or updating the firmware. The controller input power jumpers located near the center of the board are used to select the voltage powering the controller. Both jumpers must be set to the same selection and must be set prior to applying power to the controller in order for the board to function properly and to avoid damage to the controller. If you're using 5 volts to power the controller, make sure both jumpers are bridging the middle and 5 volt pin. If you're using 7 to 13 volts to power the controller, make sure both jumpers are bridging the middle and 7 to 13 volt pins. You should never remove or install the jumpers while power is applied to the board. There are two options for powering the controller itself. As shipped, the input jumpers are configured for 12 volts and power is derived from the V2 power connector. If you plan to use 5 volt pixels on ports 9 through 16, connect an independent power supply to the external power connector and set the jumper to external. If you have 12 volts on V2, make sure the jumper set to V2. It's possible to damage your board if the jumpers are set incorrectly. Make sure to observe proper polarity as the power and ground connections are not the same for V1 and V2. Grounds are toward the outside of the board and powers toward the inside. V1 powers ports 1 through 8 on the left side and V2 powers ports 9 through 16 on the right side. Now you can use different voltages, for example 5 volts on V1 and 12 volts on V2, but either label the outputs or use different pigtails to make sure you don't connect your strings to the wrong output. 12 volts on a 5 volt string will damage the string. If the F16 V3 is connected to a network and your computer is on the same network, you can access the web interface by opening a browser and typing in the IP address of the controller shown on the OLED display. The status page is the default web page, shows general information about the controller, lets you put the controller in test mode or run mode, and allows for loading or saving the controller's configuration to an XML file stored locally on your computer. E131 packets received information shows the number of packets coming into the controller for each of the defined universes. This table is useful when troubleshooting strings that aren't lighting properly. The network configuration page allows for viewing and changing the network connection settings. These settings are also available via the OLED display. The E131 ARTNET page is used to set or change the configuration of the universes being sent to the controller. The string ports page allows for configuring the pixel output ports. A board with no expansion cards will show 16 ports. For each port, you can set the pixel protocol type, the universe, start channel, pixel count or string size, direction, color order, and brightness. The serial outputs page allows for configuring the DMX output ports. You can change the mode, type, address, baud rate, and stop bits for each of the four serial circuits. The miscellaneous page has settings for the optional fan. Now, changes made on pages in the web interface are not automatically saved. You, you've got to press the save or restart interface button to apply the changes to the controller. Consult the user manual for more details. As previously mentioned, you may connect up to two expansion boards for up to 32 additional pixel output ports. Only use the new white expansion boards with the F16 V3. If you use the older red or blue boards, you might damage the controller. Each expansion board has two 40-pin cable connectors located near the top of the board. The connectors are identical and either one may be used. Connect one to the F16 V3. The other connector can be connected to a second expansion board. 
Similar to the main board, power connectors V1 and V2 accept up to 10 gauge wire and are rated for a maximum of 32 amps. Be sure to observe the proper polarity. Grounds are toward the outside of the board and power is toward the inside. V1 powers ports 1 through 8 on the left side and V2 powers ports 9 through 16 on the right side. You can use different voltages, for example 5 volts on V1 and 12 volts on V2, but either label the outputs or use different pigtails to make sure you don't connect your strings to the wrong output. The board port selector jumper is used to set which ports are used by the expansion board. If you only have one expansion board, use 17 through 32. If you have a second expansion board, you can use 33 through 48. The differential expansion board, when combined with four string differential receivers, allows you to locate up to four groups of four pixel output ports, a distance of 250 feet using Cat5, 5E, or 6 cable. The board itself will not control any pixels. The board port selector jumper is used to set which ports are used by the differential expansion board. If you only have one expansion board, use 17 through 32. If you have a second expansion board, you can use 33 through 48. The board is powered by the 40 pin ribbon cable from the F16 V3 or an external 5 volt power source. When powered from the ribbon cable, the power selection jumper should be bridging the middle and ribbon pins. If using an external 5 volt 1 amp switched power supply, the jumper should bridge the middle and external power pins. Using two differential expansion boards exceeds the power provided by the ribbon cable. In this case, one of the differential expansion boards should be powered with an external power supply and jumpered accordingly. The bottom of the differential expansion board has four RJ45 jacks used to connect to differential receivers. Standard Ethernet cables up to 250 feet, a little over 75 meters, can be used between the differential expansion board and a differential receiver. The cable transmits data only and will not power any pixels connected to the differential receiver. Pixel power is provided through the power input connector on the differential receiver. It accepts 5 or 12 volts DC and should match your pixel voltage. The RJ45 jack is used to connect a differential receiver to either the differential expansion board or one of the serial output ports on the F16 V3. Do not connect a differential expansion receiver to an Ethernet connector such as ETH0 or ETH1 on the F16 V3 as this may damage the controller. There are four pixel output ports on a differential receiver. Each port is protected by a 5 amp fuse, but they don't have indicator LEDs on them. The output is dependent on which device and jack the differential receiver is connected to. Consult the user manual for more details. Expansion board outputs are configured using the web interface on the F16 V3. Select one or two expansion boards, then configure the ports accordingly. Each of the 16 outputs on each board shares a total of 1024 pixels. This slider allows for configuring the number of pixels each board is allowed to support. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard allows for more fine-grained adjustments. Once you've made any changes to this page, press the Save button to save your changes. In conclusion, the F16 V3 continues the tradition of pushing the boundaries of lighting controller design. And once again, David has done another excellent job of producing an awesome product. If you run Pixels or you're thinking about running Pixels and you don't have a Falcon controller, buy one. You can thank me later. <laughs> I hope you found this information useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs run. There's so many cars going back.